I'm here with Joe Sitt, the CEO of Thor Equities. And also, I want to say on the record, Joe, one of the earlier supporters of Donald Trump. And predictors. And predictors, that's right. You and I had a conversation one time when you said, just watch. He's going to be elected, and he did. Okay, so do you agree? You just heard what Barry Sternlich said. Um, uh, do you agree with that, that there's not enough skilled labor out there to keep up to pace with what President like Donald Trump is saying about infrastructure? Uh, I disagree with Barry's comments in terms of slow down. Normally, I have great respect for Barry, but I think that we're already too late and we've got to make up for lost time. What I mean by that is that the Great Recession was really one of the greatest opportunities in American history to fix all of our infrastructure and bring us up to speed where effectively emerging countries today are well ahead of us. It could be the airport system, could be bridges, could be tunnels, et cetera, et cetera. Well, why is it too late? Well, what I mean by too late is that already our infrastructure is coming apart. You've got in, um, issues with water delivery, you've got issues with bridges, you've got issues with highways. And the Great Recession that happened, we needed to drive business and create jobs, and we missed that window of opportunity. It's not lost forever, but we just should have been probably doing it starting seven years ago. So my perspective is, is that Donald Trump's focus on creating jobs and getting our infrastructure, getting our cities, et cetera, et cetera, up to par is not a bad thing. Don't tell them slow down. Tell them go for it. Let's improve the system. Let's bring the United States but, into the modern era. Joe, the, one of the reasons why we missed the boat, though, so to speak, is that it was so hard to get infrastructure going. It was so hard to get Congress to do anything in the last eight years on infrastructure. So what makes the difference now? You ready? The difference is we don't have a president. We have a king. What do I mean by that? Donald Trump effectively, with a Republican-controlled Senate and a Republican-controlled Congress doesn't have the challenges that you just referred to. He won't have the bottlenecks along the way mm -hmm. from being able to effectuate getting infrastructure projects moving because he is going to have, at least in the early part of the administration, he is going to have the support of both the con Congress and the Senate. And so he's got a window of opportunity to really make things happen. Okay. So would you put that as one of his top priorities then? Uh, I would say that if you see Donald Trump's politics from pre-election to post-election, you've really seen a lot of what you and I had joked about, and but what I had said beforehand, you would effectively seen his change from the rah-rah, the aggressive approach, and a lot of things, candidly, that I didn't agree with on the campaign trail, but to really now acting logical and acting much more presidential. And you knew he was going to do this um, once he was uh, elected. I think I told you that. And you I did, think, actually, uh, yes. I think we called it pretty right. And so... Bringing, you called it right. <laughs> Sometimes we get lucky. So, uh, so anyway, long story short, as part of that, I think he's been backing off of some of the more confrontational issues. Like even Mexico, you see him tapering it back down, not looking as much for the conf conflict with the Mexicans. Got to remember, Mexico is a great country, great friend of the United States, great economic trading partner. And just for disclaimers, I have to say we're probably the largest commercial developer today mm -hmm. in the country of Mexico, our company Thor Equities. So obviously I'm bullish on Mexico, but you've seen him tone that rhetoric down and instead focus on the things that people all agree with, namely infrastructure improvement. Take our airports right here in New York City. 15 years I've had that as my number one civic venture is improving right. Newark, LaGuardia, yeah. and Kennedy. Nothing's been done, no matter how much banging that I've put out there. So we need it. We see it live right here in New York. Now, Joe, I don't, can I say this? You were overseas when, when the day after the elections, right? So, so you and I were, were, were chatting at that time, and you said there were people very nervous afterwards about Trump. But what was interesting, though, is in the weeks since, we've seen the markets just take off. Off, it seems like uh, it seems like investors are actually bullish about Trump, you know, President like so Trump. Well so, so well said. Uh, you know, throughout all the cities I was visiting, one of the places I spoke, I spoke for the Swiss Economic Forum, NZZ. They had a program there. And yes, I saw the depression over right. Donald Trump and the concern. And then I said, I want to see how everybody votes with their pocketbook. I want to wait a year. You know what? We didn't have to wait a year. We waited less than a month, and we've seen how they voted with their pocketbook. And oftentimes, that type of 
of, re, of market movement turns into reality. That mindset of positive and movement up in terms of valuations, et cetera, I think is gonna turn to real positive business and rolling out. And I think the key is just for President Donald Trump, I would say I'm very close to um, all of his children who I have tremendous respect for. I'm very, very close to Jared Kushner. I think all of his kids and Jared are amongst the smartest people I know in the business world, and I know they're good advisors to him. And I think that they'll guide him properly and keep him away from some of the hotter, tougher, more sensitive. Well, by the way, uh, how do you think they're going to be able to manage the business while also helping him manage the White House. Listen, How's that gonna work? Listen, no question, it's going to be uh, quite an interesting line to, to go down. Um, I'm less of a jealous or negative person about it. What I mean by this is, listen, if Donald Trump lost the election, let's be blunt, the name brand Donald Trump was really in the dumps. His hotels would have suffered, his business would have suffered, he would have suffered you think greatly. So? Yes, uh, most definitely. It was already starting to be effectuated. You saw it. And now, yes, he is getting the benefit of being the president of the United States. And it's going to help his business and help his brands. And their family might and probably will make billions of dollars off of it. But you know what? I don't begrudge them. I think that, especially with all the early issues going on, I think they're going to be careful in terms of that fine line that they're walking. And they will get some extra fear, but free benefits, so to speak, but it is what it is. And in the case of Jared Kushner, this is my opinion. I saw the cover of the Wall Street Journal talk about conflicts, risks, everything kind of pushing, everybody trying to push Jared out of the administration. Jared not only won the election for Donald Trump, in my humble opinion, with his modern, statistical, and a more algorithmic approach to campaigning, I think he's going to be the key to the balance of Donald Trump. I think he's somebody we want in the White House. Okay. He's going to keep him young. He's going to keep him relevant. He's going to be connected to Silicon Valley. And right. then last but not least, let's not forget, some of these folks, like a Jared, they start off, they were Democrats. So I think they're going to be balanced to that White House. And we shouldn't all rah-rah and say, keep them out of the White House because they're going to hurt us. I think Jared is going to be a tremendous beneficiary to both Donald Trump and our country as a whole. All right, forward. Joe, uh, uh, we're going to leave it there.